Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Is Jeff Renahan here? Yeah, we'll see Jeff. Bill Carlos, second ward. Jessica Lopez, third ward. Michael Safone, fourth ward. Stefan Cracker, fifth ward. Ann Shershin, sixth ward. Felicia Salvatore, town clerk. James Nelson, town attorney, will be joining us shortly. John Baisley, town supervisor. Welcome, everybody. Um, on tonight's agenda, the first thing we're going to have will be a presentation from MJ Engineering in relation to Arlington Main Street redesign project. Um, on the town board, we have a public hearing for Hudson Heritage Sewer District, number one. Number two is a resolution, historic designation of Williams Hall Complex at Vassar College. Three, accept a donation for the police department from Dimitros Bulgaris. Four, set a date for public hearing for Saddle Rock stop signs. Five, um, sign an agreement for professional services of grant writing with Millennial Strategies. Six, point Phyllis Capone, Capone as a regular member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Seven, appoint Christine Sorcelli as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Eight, approve Cliffdale Court in, in the woods of Cliffdale subdivision as a street. Nine, promote Amanda Val to senior clerk of the accounting department. Ten, appoint Joan Pickard as senior account clerk of the water department. Eleven, appoint Cynthia Adams as part-time personnel administrator. 12, prom promote Thomas Colgan as water superintendent. 13, promote Todd Miller as deputy water superintendent. 14, supervise execution of the Climate Smart Grant Participation Agreement. 15, approve the 2020 minutes. 16, notification of claim, Godiah versus the town. 17, Stratford amended easement agreements and one special consent of the budget modification for the police department. Um, we'd like to start with um, MJ Engineering for the redesign of Main Street. MJ, are you out there? Uh, yes, uh, Jackie Hakes here from MJ. And if uh, it pleases the board, I would like to share my screen. Jackie, go right ahead. Okay. And Jackie, just as you're doing that, this is Emily Dozier with the Dutchess County Transportation Council. I just wanted to give a brief introduction. Um, thanks to the board for having us on tonight. As I said, my name is Emily Dozier. I'm a senior planner with the Dutchess County Transportation Council. And I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Mark DeBald and Jackie, our consultant from NJ Engineering. And just for any of you who aren't aware of us, um, the Dutchess County Transportation Council is housed in the camp County Planning Department and we focus on transportation planning for the county and for municipalities throughout Dutchess. And we've been working with the town as well as County Public Works and an advisory committee um, for about a year and a half now on a project to make Main Street in Arlington safer, more inviting and more walkable. So tonight, Jackie is going to share with you our design concept for the corridor and answer questions that you might have. So I'll turn it over to Jackie. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Great, thank you. Thank you, Emily, appreciate that. And thank you to the town board for allowing us the opportunity on behalf of the Dutchess County Transportation Council and uh, the advisory committee for this study to share a little bit with you. Uh, we are going to provide a brief overview of the study, although uh, I do know several of the town board members have been uh, directly engaged. So I'll be quick with that and then get right to the preferred redesign concept and outline the next step. So the Arlington Main Street redesign initiative is really the next step of the 2017 Arlington Town Center pedestrian plan. That plan identified a series of recommendations for multiple intersections, uh, as well as multiple modes, uh, really focused on complete streets, looking at bicycle access, transit access, public space, and parking. The goals that were identified for this study included creating a detailed and implementable conceptual design for Main Street, which is also known as County Road 114, 
uh, to identify issues, costs, and actions needed to make this corridor more of a complete street, which means accommodating uh, a convenient, safe access for multiple modes, and to position the town and county to pursue federal and state funding for design and construction of these improvements um, hopefully over the next three to five years. So this study really is, as I mentioned, the next step. It is not the final step. There are still additional steps needed to implement this. There were four primary tasks that we engaged in as part of this study. The first was data collection, followed by an existing conditions analysis, uh, all of which has been completed and the public engagement, which we have listed as ongoing. This uh, presentation to you, uh, the town board, is part of that public engagement. And then finally, the evaluation of multiple concepts and the final preferred concept uh, wrapped up into a final plan. And we are in the process of uh, revising that final plan as we speak. The study team uh, in included an advisory committee which provided direction for this process throughout the entire study. The advisory committee included representation from Dutchess County Transportation Council, DCTC, uh, the Dutchess County Department of Public Works. Uh, there was representation from the town of Poughkeepsie, including the town, uh, some town board members, as well as your town staff members and representatives from the Arlington Business Improvement District, the BID, were also part of the study team. And uh, our team, MJ Engineering and Land Surveying, provided technical assistance for the advisory committee throughout this study. Quick reminder of the study area that we were focused on, it's approximately a half mile segment uh, traveling, uh, beginning at the North and South Grand intersection with Main Street and traveling east through to the Taft and Fairmont Avenue intersection. The existing conditions analysis of the study included, as I mentioned, a data collection, capacity analysis, a crash analysis, uh, an examination of bicycle and pedestrian traffic within the corridor, as well as an understanding of the existing loan, uh, zoning, land uses, and parking within this corridor. The study process also involved uh, a multi-pronged approach to public engagement. Uh, back in the fall of 2019, we held a series of stakeholder group meetings um, for various different entities. Uh, we met with county and state uh, representatives, town departments, uh, the bid, uh, emergency services, local businesses, and that occurred again in the fall of 2019. We also conducted an online survey in the fall of 2019 that was available in both Spanish and English. And we, uh, we received over 250 responses to that online survey. And we also conducted three pop-up stations during that same time period uh, at the Arlington Street Fair, the Farmer's Market, and then in front of Davies Hardware, all geared toward capturing public input about the corridor. We presented the preferred uh, alternative and preferred concept at a virtual public meeting at the beginning of October of this year. And we also had the opportunity to present uh, the preferred alternative at the end of October to the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. Throughout this process, we have held committee meetings to provide input and those really uh, functioned in uh, the form of work sessions to provide guidance and direction and uh, constant coordination with DCTC uh, was had throughout this process, as well as input throughout from the County DPW and New York State DOT. So here's where we started. This is the existing street layout of Main Street. So there is an existing sidewalk, uh, the, the width of which varies. Uh, there's a buffer strip. So that buffer strip is the area where street trees tend to be and utilities are. Um, there is a travel lane in both westbound and eastbound directions, as well as a parking lane in both directions. And the width of the pavement from curb to curb varies throughout the Main Street corridor from 40 to 46 feet. And there currently is no delineated parking uh, within this corridor. So what did we do? We took a look at multiple concepts. We examined two draft concepts. Um, and what we were doing is looking at what could be, what could be done within that existing right-of-way 
uh, to minimize impacts and costs as much as possible, yet still achieving the, those goals that the study had outlined. Um, those concepts were reviewed by the committee, a DPW, uh, and we worked to develop a preferred concept based on that in, in input, as well as input from uh, uh, New York State DOT and County Public Transit, which helped us to further refine the preferred concept. And the direction through all of this coordination was to start with an ideal design. Um, so recognizing that we wanted to try and achieve these goals as best as possible and start with the ideal design and see where that takes us. And in particular, that became critical at the intersection of North and South Grand Avenues, uh, where it was important to try and accommodate all anticipated vehicles as best as possible. <clears throat> So the preferred concept, that's where we are right now and where we are today, um, does include an intersection roundabout at the Grand Avenue intersection. Uh, it does include as one of two options a mini roundabout at Taft, Fairmont, and Main Street. Um, it identifies a consistent width of travel lanes at 11 feet. It identifies and delineates a parking lane. Um, with an eight foot minimum width uh, and the length of the parking, uh, parking spaces uh, varies depending on the location of them. Uh, the, the parking delineation includes what we call a T parking delineation. I'll show that uh, in a moment. Um, and it allows for a more efficient uh, use of parking uh, throughout the corridor. Um, and then the, the last item with the preferred concept uh, is really that this could allow for a flexible pavement treatment, um, uh, full depth reconstruction versus mill and overlay. And the difference between that truly is cost. Uh, that's the biggest uh, difference with that. So here's the preferred concept um, at North and South Grand intersection. Uh, this is a mini roundabout. Um, it includes, uh, uh, you can see the crosswalks there. Uh, it really is intended to serve as a gateway to Arlington, um, but also to mitigate some of the challenges with the offset intersection uh, here. Uh, we really looked at a lot of different options to try to address and minimize the impacts of adjacent properties. And this was, uh, this was the preferred ideal design moving forward. A lot of design would still need to happen here to determine the full extent of potential impacts, uh, but the intent here is to create uh, safer, more convenient access, um, not only for vehicles, but also for pedestrians through this area. Uh, this is just to demonstrate the turning movements that can be accommodated within this roundabout, and this is representative of a, of a fire truck um, uh, to, uh, to coordinate with the Arlington Fire District. If we move further along the, the corridor uh, to the Street Avenue to Jones Street area, this is moving east, um, you can see what uh, key elements that are carried throughout the corridor. So there are crosswalks, there are pedestrian bump outs here uh, to be able to show, uh, to be able to create a safer place for pedestrians, also opportunities for streetscape amenities such as benches, et cetera. Um, the green that you see here is, uh, is a proposed uh, bus pull-off. However, we recognize that further uh, coordination would need to happen with public transit to determine the exact location within the corridor of the bus pull-off. But this is to demonstrate that there can be uh, a bus pull-off accommodated here within the corridor. That parking delineation, you see these little mini T's that happen to be um, uh, on, on the screen here, that is where the parking is, is delineated. And throughout the corridor, uh, within the buffer strip, the addition of uh, street trees has been included throughout. And the idea is to have a consistent design theme throughout the entire corridor. We travel along uh, the corridor to Raymond Avenue. This intersection, uh, there are not a, a, there's not a substantial amount of changes proposed. There has been some improvements uh, fairly recently to this intersection, but it's really about, again, carrying that consistent theme through, um, uh, very clear uh, delineation of pedestrian crosswalks, and again, pedestrian uh, bump outs and street trees through here. Moving along to the Fowler Ave area, um, this is an area where we are proposing to introduce an additional crossing uh, with a crosswalk, again, 
pedestrian bump outs that cr that creates a safer place for the pedestrians to kind of uh, be seen better by vehicular travel. And then additional uh, crosswalks at Fowler and Van Wagner. <coughs> and then if we move along to the Taft Fairmont Avenue intersection, this is uh, uh, what a mini roundabout might be here. Uh, this would include, uh, would need to include coordination with DOT. This is a DOT intersection. Um, but it, as part of an evaluation of intersection improvements, uh, you first need to look and prove that a roundabout won't work. So this is certainly option A. Um, again, trying to create uh, another gateway uh, opportunity here for the Arlington District while also accommodating and addressing some of the, um, the traffic concerns at this particular location. And uh, the coordination with DOT is important on a number of reasons. There, there might be some challenges here with traffic volumes, the location and close proximity of signalized intersections, particularly with the, uh, the 4455 arterial. We recognize there's another study happening with regard to that, so the need to coordinate that would be very important moving forward. Uh, because we recognize that there are, uh, there's a lot that would need to be evaluated, there's also an option B, which is a more traditional option to accommodate uh, some of these elements, um, uh, really creating a more defined pedestrian space, creating a more defined area for vehicles to know where they need to be, which lane they need to be in earlier, um, to hopefully create a safer intersection uh, again, creating a, a, a gateway element um, uh, at this particular location. And this is what that preferred concept cross-section looks like. Pretty similar because we were trying to work within the existing right-of-way, but, but reshaping some of the elements here. So a six-foot minimum sidewalk, a four-foot buffer strip, a uh, delineated parking lane in both directions, and then that 11 foot travel lane, again, in both the westbound and the eastbound directions. And so the next steps are to finalize the document. We're working with uh, Emily and Mark at DCTC right now to finalize that document, uh, which does include the preferred concept, um, all of the backup uh, existing conditions that helped us to get to that point. Um, as well as cost estimates, and uh, that will be advanced to you, the town board, as well as to the county uh, to pursue implementation and identify opportunities for uh, funding of design and construction. And so that's what I have this evening. Uh, wanted to be respectful. I recognize you do have a, a pretty lengthy agenda, but um, happy to answer any questions um, either for myself or, or for Emily or, or Mark from DCTC. Do any of the board members have any questions at this time? No, I think it's a very good project. Um, none from me. No. If not, I'd like to thank uh, Jackie, Emily, and Mark for appearing tonight. And this has been a great project to work on. And we look forward to moving it forward. And thanks, MJ, for the great job and thorough process that we've gone through so far. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The next thing on our agenda for tonight is a public hearing on Hudson Heritage Sewer District. I'd like to make a motion to open that public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anybody here to discuss the Hudson Heritage Sewer District? Uh, David, are you going to introduce this or how do you want to do this? Sure. I. I, I can quickly, uh, members of the board, just for the record, as you know, David Cooper, partner with the law firm of Zarin and Steinmetz, uh, serving as your special counsel in this matter. Um, we're here tonight on a public hearing that is required pursuant to the town law uh, to uh, start the process of creating the sewer district for the Hudson Heritage uh, uh, project and, and, and property. Um, the uh, sewer district would cover the entirety of, of, of the property. Uh, as part of the review process and as part of the approvals, uh, Hudson Heritage or, or the, the, the property owner, uh, EFG Sabre, uh, is required to, to create a, a district 
Uh, and so they have submitted a petition to the to the town to start off that process. And so that that's what we're here uh, tonight to do. Um, as you know, there are some other uh, items uh, that are associated with, with this uh, project with respect to um, potential uh, EFC funding for a portion of the sewer district to um, what I would describe as clean up some issues uh, that the state kind of left behind uh, in, the, in the sewer line. Um, and uh, that would be uh, incorporated as part of, of the district. Um, costs associated with any EFC uh, funding that should the town uh, uh, secure um, any debt service would be charged uh, back to the to the um, <clears throat> excuse me to the uh, district owners. Um, but uh, the issue for tonight is is because the town law requires a public hearing. Uh, we have duly noticed the public hearing and, and uh, can can open up for, for public comment um, and certainly any, any questions or, or comments of the board as well. Right. And, and if I may, Mr. Supervisor, on behalf of, of the uh, petitioner, this is Peter Wise, Del Bello, Donellan, Weingarten, Wise, and Whitaker. Uh, it's nice to be here tonight on, on a night when I think we're all going to get about as much snow as we got all of last winter. Um, it, let me just add to what David said just very briefly uh, and say to you that what's in front of you tonight uh, represents well more than a year's worth of work, uh, both by the petitioner, by EFG Sabre, and certainly by the town, most particularly the town attorney, special counsel David Cooper, your town engineer and your town engineering consultant. Um, and, and we think it, you know, that, that what's now in front of you works fairly for, for all stakeholders. Uh, with me tonight is Martin Berger, a principal of EFG Sabre, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Peter, thanks at this point. Um, is there anybody else that would like to discuss this hearing? Please raise your hand if you'd like to speak about this particular public hearing. I'm just getting down to her. Hey, I Doreen, see Doreen's name, but I don't hear her. Doreen, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you. So um, Mr. Cooper mentioned um, funding for some cleanup. Is that a hazardous cleanup? No. Uh, no. Uh, the There are sewer lines that, that, are, that are leaking, not, not hazardous contaminated, but but, uh, but sewage. Um, not that they're, they're it's not, a, not an active leak, but they've been historically leaking. Um, and so as part of the, the uh, project, um, there is funding available, uh, potentially available, I should say it that way, uh, for the town uh, to, uh, to borrow money from the from EFC, from the state, to, implement, uh, to build new, uh, essentially a new sewer line and uh, uh, remediate that, those issues. Hey, thank you. Anything else, Doreen? No. Is there somebody else here? Tom Lawrence. Tom Lawrence. Tom Lawrence. No. He had his hand up. Bill Carlos had his hand up. <laughs> Bill, would you like to say something? Yes. My fellow board members, um, I, like most of you, feel that this is a good idea for us to be involved with um, alleviating the mess that New York State left when they walked away from the state hospital, including a massive sewage leak. So it makes sense to me that we do this on the behest of the people who are going to be the taxpayers there and the rest of the town. I do have some concerns uh, with the project. My concerns are in the area of section I of the agreement, uh, which is titled retention of salvageable, decorative, and architectural and building design components of principal structures to the extent possible. And this brings me into the discussion with respect to some of the things that are at the site that um, need to be protected 
and used in the new sites um, the information came to me about this now I'm going to try and share this screen and if I if I screw it up then I'll come back can you see that yep and you can hear me correct okay these are screenshots and I have no idea what that means of a site called the Demolition Depot. And it cites the Poughkeepsie, New York, Hudson River State Hospital. And there are items that are for sale here. I understand the site has been taken down. But you can see, and most people know that things from historic buildings really can affect other people's houses. You can use it for your house for your business and my concern is that some of this stuff i think should be covered under the retention section i for example these wrought iron fire escapes there's also wrought iron banister rails uh, for porches mm -hmm. Stained glass windows. I don't, I'm not an architect. The cornice, the way the door shapes, this part just above the door, these are historic items. That's from one of the screens that's done in wrought iron. By the way, when this was done, that was all done by hand. And the gates. Okay, the bottom paragraph of this page said, we have been commissioned, the we meaning the demolition depot, to reclaim and sell pieces from these historic buildings. There is a large quantity of pieces in several categories, and we welcome your help in placing some of them into your reuses. Uh, I understand the site has been taken down now, but it was up. And that brought to my mind the discussions we had specifically about some of the historic parts of some of those buildings up there being reused in the new construction. Um, I understand that we do have some kind of a committee. I think Yvonne is on the committee. I don't know who everybody else is on the committee doing this. But I'm a little concerned when I can see a web page offering items from Hudson River State for sale and uh, whether or not the people from who represent the town have been involved in what this is. Uh, so I would like to see us move forward with assisting uh, with this sewer plan and with assisting them in getting uh, their project completed in the town of Poughkeepsie. On the other side of that coin, I'd like them to really clearly understand that I take for serious protecting some of the historic points as indicated in the section. I think this is the CICA agreement that I'm reading from. David, nod your head. Okay. Retention. Are, are, you, are, you, are you Sorry, Bill, are you referring to the CICA finding statement? Is that, that might be it. Yes. Okay. okay. I retention of salvageable decorative architectural and building design components of principal structures to the extent possible. And I, I understand that I'm a little concerned that stuff shows up on a web page for sale and I don't know what we know about it or don't know about it. I am sure now that I brought this to everybody's attention, uh, Peter and Marty, that, that this won't happen again. And if you have any doubts, it's sort of like when I was a young cop. When in doubt, ask the sergeant. When in doubt, ask the people from the town. Please don't put us in a position where we're trying to work with you and trying to police you at the same time. That's yeah. not fair to the town. Yeah, I, and, I, and you're absolutely right. And, and I think you probably know, Councilman, that that's certainly not our intent. Um, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I was discussing these kinds of issues with Marty Berger earlier today. 
Um, he's on. Marty, I don't know if you want to just like address this briefly and just and just bring everybody up to speed about how you've been dealing with preservation of, of the site. You're not being heard, Marty. No, it's not. Marty? Not showing him as mute, it's showing him as not connected. Yeah, it's saying that he's connecting to audio now. He must be having a Zoom related issue. Hopefully it'll connect. Yvonne, I see your hand is raised, so just hold on. Unmute, Marty. Hi, it's Marty Berger. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can now. Okay. Uh, thanks for taking the opportunity to speak with us tonight. I see Yvonne is on. Perhaps Yvonne would like to take the first stab at responding to you, Bill. Yvonne, can you, would you like to? Hi, it's Yvonne Lobby uh, with the Town Historic Preservation Commission. Um, I was the one who brought the, uh, it was an article in Harlem Magazine that brought to my attention that these pieces were being sold or going to be up for sale. And um, then I immediately turned around and, and asked Marty and presented to the town planning department um, about what's happening. Like, you know, it was very startling to see these things. I was assured that none of the items that, uh, I was assured by the developers that none of the items had been removed from the site that Demolition Depot uh, had posted on their website. However, I did an inventory in October um, and there are several pieces that I could not find. And when I, I sent an email to the developers, I haven't heard any response from them regarding, namely the, the big, um, the grates, the decorative grates, arched grates that Bill pointed out um, and some of the carved stone. So it may be that, I don't know what's, what's happened to them, but those are the items in question. And then Marty did say that, um, you know, he, he said that the developers who were contracted to do the demolition on the Southern, the Southern campus were the ones who hired the salvage company to remove the pieces and they weren't aware of it. And that they've been working with this de demolition depot company now um, to try to find ways to reincorporate items from the salvage into the site. The new construction well thank you so just to clarify we unfortunately had a rogue demolition contractor that took it upon himself to offer to his associate demolition demo depot excuse me the ability to go into some of the buildings in the north and salvage material um, and yvonne brought it to our attention and we uh, stopped it immediately. We identified the owner of Demolition Depot, a fellow named uh, Evan Bloom. Can you, let me share my, am I allowed to share my screen? Go ahead, Marty. Okay. <clears throat> share screen. So we, ident we found the individual, his name was uh, Evan Blum, and we, inquired as to what was going on and he told us that he entered into an agreement with the demolition company pursuant to which the demolition company had the right to sell him the materials inside the building uh, that was absolutely a lie it was a criminal act and we notified evan blum the owner of demolition depot he um, apologized he wrote us this email explaining his how he got involved that it was he was basically duped by the demolition company and he identified where all of the material was on site that he painstakingly in a great effort uh, stockpiled and we have secured that and have protected it and put it in a safe location as well as in uh, storage trainer storage containers there were two individual pieces that we have not yet identified and we believe that the demolition company themselves took. 
One it was the gate that you showed in that picture, and one was a cornice. With the exception of those two items, we've recovered and we've stored everything else, and we intend to pursue all legal remedies against the demolition company before before they leave the the, the, the project. Uh, this fellow, Evan Bloom, who I believe was duped, went on to work with our architect and spent uh, a good amount of time working with the architect uh, to incorporate um, all sorts of materials into the new buildings. But to let you know where we are today, I think Yvonne could affirm that we've done a good job, a very good job of uh, doing what we're supposed to do in terms of reusing the materials and to um, protect the buildings that we are supposed to. So uh, as an example, these are grills from the top of the um, building that you showed that we have uh, collected a good amount of and will incorporate into, into the buildings themselves. The fact is, is that we have so much material that at the end of the day, we will have leftover and we may very well dispose of it by sale or do something with it. But until we decide where and what elements we're going to incorporate into the project, there's nothing at all that's going to leave the site. But um, our architects have taken uh, the time in, to create architectural renderings where we're incorporating pieces of the existing structures into the buildings. And this isn't one example. I'm sorry, Marty, but I can't see the example. Right. It's okay. Not coming up. Do you? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let's see here. Your screen is paused. Resume share. How is that? <laughs> Can you see the screen now? That's yeah. the email, Marty, just blown up. Okay. Now? No. no that's email. That's your email. <laughs> Can you? Okay. Sorry. Share screen. How about now? There you go. Okay. Oh, wow. Now we have renderings, yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is an example. These are screens from the top of one of the existing buildings that we've incorporated into the building design. Mm -hmm. We've created this uh, presentation that we're in a process of finalizing and working with that shows the examples of where and how we're intending to using pieces of the building. Uh, you can see the blue. This is one corner element, is another corner element, another one, and another one. And um, these itself are pieces of the existing uh, building that we're saving and reusing. Some here, some here, some cornices, uh, some architectural elements. I believe there's some better pictures here. So uh, here an example, there's, um, there's stone that's being reused. There's iron work that's being reused. We're using a whole bunch of these window frames. We've kept some of these keystones incorporating them. We've kept these uh, banding, the building banding. Uh, we've kept cornices here. Uh, we've preserved the pitched roof. We have stone that we're reusing. Um, you can see in this in this picture, let's see here. Uh, over here, there's a cornice that we're going to reincorporate into one of the building's design. The top of this building here duplicate replicates, excuse me, the top of uh, one of the buildings on the north wing. The ironwork here. Here is the stepped roof detail that you see in the south wing that's being replicated on top of this building. Here's a decorative arch door that's going to be used here. So this decorative dark door, each one of these stones is 300 pounds. So we're going to take two inches of it 
and replace it here in the facade. These window grills and stained glasses, we've saved uh, a good amount of them, more than we can ever use. And we have a design where they will be incorporated into the backs of the buildings. So this is on the side of the building, but a lot of them are on the back of the building facing the shop right. Yeah, thanks, Marty. Um, Marty, thank you. Uh, sorry, I had and then to bring here on the, art, on the art decorative wall, you know, there's a whole, a whole series of materials that will be incorporated into the art wall. And then lastly, as you know, the pylon is going to be incorporating uh, 5,000 brick from the original administration building. And just while I have you here, let me show you uh, two photos. This is the existing, the current picture of the administration building where we've uh, washed and power washed uh, all of the, the entire building. We repointed the cornices and the windows about 35% uh, of the new windows are in. Uh, the roofs have been rebuilt. We have a metal right. worker recreating Marty. the Marty. metal ornamental treatment on the back along Marty, with the uh, lightning picture. attenuators. And uh, the building is being sheeted. Marty, we're not and seeing it's... We're not seeing the right picture, Marty. We're not seeing the right okay. picture. Okay. Obviously, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> Marty, I'm I terrible you, at it. <laughs> I think you answered Bill's question. Uh, I think, Marty, uh, Marty, if I may, thank you. Yes. I have much more information than I had at the beginning of the meeting. If you had a criminal act, I think that you should call our police department and sign a criminal complaint. <laughs> Next uh, thing we down the line to, is, as we, we go have reported, this, we have reported it. Uh, this this demolition company has done some other criminal activities, and your police department is involved with the matter, and they know what's going on. Okay, that's great. That's one hundred percent. Um The only other thing that I can that I can ask you to do is, as you go through this, uh, I wouldn't know a cornice from a front door, but Yvonne and people who are associated with her on our historic committee. Uh, do so, please. Rather than get to the point where you got a councilman asking you a question in public, just communicate a lot with that group. Thank you for your your answer, Marty, and and I appreciate the work you're doing. Thanks, Thank Bill. you. Yvonne, Thank you, Councilman. Yvonne, you raised your hand again. Are you through? No, I would like to add um, some comments to the. Uh, for the meeting so um yeah like uh, like bill said and i you know i do on behalf of the commission i i applaud the efforts of the developer to work on the administration building in replacing the roof and installing the new windows um the building looks beautiful i haven't seen it look that good in a very long time um i do kindly request again that submittals be sent in for us to review for the decorative ironwork and the weather vane and the lightning arresters um, prior to production. If, if hopefully it's not too late. Um, uh, also, just to bring the, the town board up to speed, because I haven't you know sat in front of you guys in a long time, uh, the Town Historic Preservation Commission, and with the permission of the developer, I have organized a, a memorial committee and um, made up of nurses, alumni, and historians. And um, you know, we we plan to create some ideas to present to the developer and ways to memorialize the site's history as far back as the Wappinger tribes, all the way up to uh, you know prior to the developer taking over the site. Um, the there is the way we see it there is a lot of potential for reuse of other buildings and because the you know the time frame that this project is taking i would like to ask the town to not be um not have a, a trigger finger when it comes to releasing demo permits too far in advance because you know once you lose a building you're not rebuilding it so um you know i know that they're not starting any work on the north campus yet but when the work is looking like it's coming down the pipeline, then can you know please 
reviewer thing and, you know, be cautious with that. Um, because, you know, if God forbid something happened in this project and it goes into another hiatus, I don't want to lose any more buildings. Um, I do also want to point out though, with regards to the salvage company's work, they did end up, uh, you know, consequentially, um, uh, demolishing uh, unintentionally a building by removing some of the timber out of the roof trusses um, in the back in one of the buildings. And, you know, all this was done without permit. So, you know, there's more uh, attention needs to be paid at the site. Um, and I know that Marty has stepped up. They've got a security crew up there now and they've got lights and cameras. So, you know, hopefully less of that kind of stuff will happen. Uh, and then finally, as Bill had mentioned regarding the salvage and reuse, um, you know, we we applaud any efforts to salvage and reuse as much material as possible. We think that more could be done. I, I personally would like to see more um, pieces incorporated into the North uh, North Campus construction. I know that the South Campus is, is pretty well written in stone as far as the design, but in the North Campus, if they can incorporate more materials, um, and I'm not saying rebuild the Kirkbride, I'm just saying, you know, use the pieces that make that building unique. They were hand carved and hand designed by the architect. Um, try to find new ways to, to use them in the new construction. Um, and then finally, with regards to, there's a couple of other little things, like the, it came to my attention that there are some bricks that have um, patients' names and dates scratched into them that were, you know, places where I imagine that patients would hang out and they, you know, doodled their names basically. Um, and some of these go back, you know, before the 60s. And I would like to try to see if we can come up with a, a solid plan to actually pull these bricks out and save them and rehome them, whether they go to the nurse's museum or they're saved for a memorial. Um, that would be excellent. And I'm, I'm happy to work with you on that and pinpointing where these things are. Um, and lastly, my uh, I would like to again, suggest a consideration be made to reuse the North Wing, um, either as a shell and uh, or at the very least the facade, because it's the only remaining portion of the main building that would reflect the Kirkbride plan. And it gives you this presence as you're driving up the Hudson View Drive uh, that of the grandeur that the site once had. And by reusing the North Wing and it or its facade, it resolves the issue of what to do with the northernmost tower um, since it's already connected to it. It also, um, uh, you know, sets the precedent for reusing the existing road that runs parallel to the North Wing and thus the 140-year-old uh, plus sycamore trees that line the road, you know, given that they're in good condition. Yvonne. Um, Yvonne, yeah, and that's it. I'm good. That's it. Hey, thanks, I think Yvonne. you answered Bill's question pretty well, and, and thanks for speaking on the Historic Commission. Is there anyone from the public that wanted to speak about the sewer district portion of this public and, hearing? And right, let me let me just let me just refocus us. Remember, the, the, this public hearing is about the creation of the sewer district for Hudson Heritage um, and, and the property. So, uh, to the extent that 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 people want to comment, we're, we're, the, the board is asking for comments about the creation of the district. If anybody wants to raise their hand and speak about that. Anybody else? I don't see anybody raising their hand about the sewer district. Make a motion to close this public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Felicia, you want to roll call because I can't hear you. Um, are you voting on it tonight or are you just, just closing, closing the public, public hearing? hearing? Just closing so you don't need to do a roll call. I need to hear the voices. I'm not hearing everybody's voice. Okay. So we'd like to take a vote on closing the public hearing. Um, Jessica. Jessica. Aye. Bill Carlos. Aye. Ann Shershin. Aye. Mike Safone. Aye. Jay Baisley. Aye. Stefan Krakauer. Stefan, sorry, I forgot Aye. you. <laughs> Aye. Thanks. Motion passes. <laughs> Six zero, and that's just to close the public just hearing. To close the public hearing. We'll come back to this. <laughs> Thank you. We'll come back to another date to go further. Thanks for the input to help us going further with this bill. I'm working with Yvonne on that. Thank you. Good night. With this, good night. Good night. That brings us to the end of our public hearing. 
um, tonight's agenda. I would like to open the for public comment on any item on the agenda. Second. Or Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. 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 Motion passes. Does anybody here like to speak on any item on the public? on the agenda for public comment for just any item on the agenda, nothing outside the agenda. And please ask to keep your comments to three minutes as this is a long meeting. Um, what's that? I have, a, I have a list, small list and I'm gonna start with that. Okay, go ahead. Um, and the first person that was on the list was Eve. Eve, D-A-M-B-R-A. -A. Right here. Okay, Go hold, ahead, on. hold on one second. Go ahead. Oh, I could start? Can start. Good evening. My name is Eve Dombra. I'm a professor of art history at Vassar College. Are you there, Eve? You're in the Genome's house. House is historically significant. You're breaking up. Can you hear me? You're breaking up. I think your internet's a little off. Yeah. Go ahead. Try again, Eve. Oh. All right. You freeze a little okay, bit. Okay, I will just move closer to a server. There you go. Okay. Here. Right, now we can hear you. Am I okay now? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'm, whew, um, about Williams House, it's historically significant because it is not a Gilded Age mansion nor a Fifth Avenue townhouse, typically designed by the Hunt brothers. It's dead and shows us how a historical revival style was used in a smaller, simple, and less luxurious building, a faculty apartment house. In fact, it is unique in this aspect. The Hunt brothers had to work on a different scale here. Yet even in modest circumstances, Williams House demonstrates good design principles and aesthetics in the Tudor revival style. The steeply pitched roofs with tall chimneys, the half timbering above, and the symmetrical and rhythmic facade graced the structure with a rustic charm and old world character. That it is not as grand or opulent as other hunt buildings does, does not as, as other hunt buildings, does not make it less historically significant. In fact, it is all the more important since many of the Hunt brothers' buildings have been demolished. Please note that Mills Mansions and other historic houses give tours of servants' quarters that focus on their working lives. This too is historically significant, as is the professional status and advancement of single women on the Vassar faculty who received rooms of their own here. Previously, they lived in a dormitory with students. This represented another step forward in the women's movement. The women poets, historians, and scientists not only read and wrote in these apartments, but they took part in the civic life of the town and also engaged in the wider world. This is a history that matters. Um, just briefly, the um, Williams House uh, forms the entrance of the residential neighborhood um, and it graces next to it is the lawn, that's the alumni house lawn that forms the public meeting place and recreational area for the entire community. Clearly, it is important to the community and it provides beauty in this residential area. Um, thank you for your patience. Sorry for my connection. Thank That's you. okay, Eve, thank you. Um, there are a lot of people, I'm just gonna state a fact that spoke during the public hearing that are again speaking tonight. Um, if there's anybody new, if you could sign up in the chat that didn't get a chance to speak last time, that would be helpful. I'm still going yeah. by the list. And that was me. Next is Jonathan Gordon. Thank you. I believe you spoke last The time. town code says the building may be landmarked if is of historic value or aesthetic interest. In the application for historic designation, in letters, and in public comments, the town board have been giving a long detailed case filled with references to the public historic record of the importance of Williams Hall in the history of women's education in the United States and in the town of Poughkeepsie in particular, and of its aesthetic interest. Williams provided the first independent living quarters for the women teaching at Vassar. Its opening was a major event reported on by the newspapers in the area, as well as Vassar's own publications for the campus community and those for its alumni. The early residents wrote testimony of the significance of the building to their lives, 
providing them with distance they needed in order to have lives independent from their students, and giving them the quiet and space they needed for their scholarship. They wrote of the comfort and joy of their apartments as places where they could sit and read, but they were also social spaces. In the college newspaper, the residents published their apartment numbers and at-home hours, the times that they opened their doors to receive students and other visitors in Williams. The State Historic Preservation Office and the Town Historic Preservation Commission have both affirmed in writing the important role that Williams played in the history of the college and thus the community. They've also attested that Williams is a valuable, irreplaceable work of architecture. Williams is remarkably well-preserved as an example of the Tudor revival style designed by some of the most important architects of the time. Its appearance defines the character and enhances the value of the residential neighborhood surrounding it. To say that we don't need to preserve Williams because Alumni House is nearby is akin to saying that the White House can be demolished because the Capitol building is a better example of the federal style. We're considering buildings that were designed for different purposes, but function as a cohesive set. Removing either would be to the detriment of the other. To claim that Williams is lacking in either the historical value or the aesthetic interest for landmark designation would be to ignore the extensive evidence and testimony the board's been provided. And I believe it would be a terrible mistake. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next I have on the list is a Jean Kane. Yes, here. Go right ahead. Uh, I, am, I would like, I'm Jean Kane. I live at 91 Raymond Avenue. I would like to uh, address the resolution uh, that you have been presented with, I believe, to vote on. The resolution cherry picks the standards for historical preservation. It ignores the criterion that our appeal is based upon. It stresses areas that should not concern the town board and makes assumptions based on the assertions of one side, many of which are in dispute. It features the complaints of residents from 10 or 20 years ago and ignores the testimony of people who lived in the building until very recently and their desire to stay in it. It takes Williams out of the context of the overall state of faculty housing at Vassar. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, and I have Tom Lawrence here, but I think Yvonne, that was you mixed up. So there's, I'm gonna skip over that name. Um, I'm gonna go to Susan uh, S, I mean, Z-L-O-T-N-I-C-K is next. It's Zlotnick? Yep, okay, okay. go ahead. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Susan Zlotnick. I teach in the English department at Vassar and I live on College Avenue. Um, directly across from the Alumni House driveway. Um, I see both 159 College Ave, Alumni House, and Williams every time I look out my front window. Now, I think I know why the college wants to pull down Williams, which is essentially in no better or worse shape than most faculty or student housing on campus. The people who run the college have a gun to their heads. A few rich trustees want a fancy hotel to stay at for the three or four times a year they visit the campus. They are forcing the college's administration to do their bidding, presumably with threats of withholding money or support, because they are rich people who are accustomed to having their way. It's not pretty, but it's understandable. What I can't understand is why the Town of Poughkeepsie Board would even entertain allowing an intact early 20th century streetscape with gracious structures on the south side of College Avenue facing a trio of Tudor Revival buildings on the north side to give way to a parking lot in an undistinguished brick hotel. Once something is gone, it's gone forever. It seems to be a theme of tonight. Um, and if the board does not vote to preserve Williams, the town won't be able to get back the historic street, streetscape that now provides a lively human scale and architecturally interesting backdrop for the town of Poughkeepsie residents. These residents walk their dogs and ride their bikes down College Avenue. They sit out on the large green that anchors both the neighborhood and the business district. They live here 52 weeks a year and they vote and they pay taxes in the town, unlike wealthy Vassar trustees who, as I noted, fly in a few times a year. It seems to me that the board's choice is clear. Does it vote for the residents of the town and to preserve Williams, 
or does it decide that the needs of a few Vassar trustees for a nice place to stay trump the wishes of those of us who live here? I hope you'll decide to vote for the people you represent. That's it, I'm done. Okay, um, I have uh, Karen Robinson, but before she comes up, there's a few people in the audience and I, I don't know if it's snowing worse or less since I got here, but do any of you like, would you like to speak now or do you mind waiting until the end? I'll be the last time. Thank you for Is the gentleman there here to speak or? I'll behind you, not you, sir, behind Tommy. No. Do you want to speak? You can come. No. I'll say something about your I'll wait. Okay. okay. Just wanted to check because it, it is snowing. Okay, Karen, you're next on the list. Karen uh, Robertson. Are you there? Karen, you have to unmute yourself. Thank you. I'm a retired Vassar faculty member. I live on College Avenue, not in faculty housing. I have taught at Vassar for 36 years, Shakespeare and Women's Studies. I urge that Williams be granted historic preservation status. Vassar has had a very significant place in the histories of women's education in this country, as we all know. Uh, as it was one of the first women's colleges to offer a liberal arts degree to women. Williams is a building that has great significance to the professional development of women faculty. It marks the beginnings of the acknowledgement of women's professional status as scholars and teachers, not as dormitory monitors. It is an early register of women's entrance into professional life. As supposedly, the Institute will advance the professional development of liberal arts faculty in the 21st century, but putting a hotel and a parking lot in the place of a building that meant such an advance for women faculty seems an unfortunate rejection of Vassar's history and its significance in women's history more generally. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you, Karen. Um, next, even though it's a little bit out of order, I'm going to call on Denise Whalen. Denise, can you speak? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm Denise Whalen. I'm also a faculty member at Vassar College. I live at Eight Old Silver Mine Place, just behind the campus. Um, I would like to speak to the historical preservation and the importance of it. Um, as my colleague Eve Dombra uh, explained, there is architectural beauty and great significance to the buildings that are on that site that would be torn down. Um, as several of my other colleagues, uh, Susan Zlotnick and um, Karen Robertson have also spoken, um, there's great historical importance to the buildings themselves. Uh, when the buildings were put up, they, they, they predated um, um, uh, an idea that became uh, seminal um, with the writing of um, uh, Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. Um, this building, Williams, was a place where female faculty for the first time in Vassar's history could have a, a, a room to themselves, a, a place to live separate from their work lives. And um, they talked in the um, uh, campus publications about how productive they became with, the, with living in um, Williams House. There's also a, um, a, a worker's history here that the, the women who worked in Williams House saw it as a collective, um, a, a place where they could gather, a place where they in fact shared space. They shared kitchen spaces. Um, uh, and coming together to share meals um, and talk about their day was in incredibly important to them. I think that the, that the streetscape, as Susan said, is worthy of preservation. It's um, one of the most beautiful residential areas uh, in the town of Poughkeepsie, and it would be a great loss to the town um, the, to have a, a, a large, kind of sleek, busy, crowded restaurant and inn replace this quiet, beautiful, 
architecturally lovely, um, naturally bucolic area. Um, I, I would um, encourage the board to vote for historic preservation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Phyllis Capone, but Phyllis, are you wanting to speak on your agenda item? Are you there, Phyllis? Yes, so you can bump me back to whenever that's okay. appropriate. I'm going to put a star and come back to you. It's not too, too much longer. All right, um, next after no, Phyllis. No, it's fine. Phyllis, I have Luke H. Luke, are you there? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, there's several things I'd like to talk about uh, since the last meeting. The December 2nd meeting was a public hearing. However, time and time again, people who were speaking were repeatedly interrupted before their three minutes had elapsed. Not only that, this was biased against the people who were speaking in favor of preservation. It happened much more often for people speaking in terms of preservation, in favor of preservation. So I urge the board to hold a new public hearing that has to be properly noticed before any vote can happen, uh, for example, on the resolution. Now, regarding the resolution, I couldn't believe it when I read it. It's, it mischaracterizes the town code. It says, quote, under the town code, in order to qualify for designation as a local landmark, a building or property must have special historic significance to the heritage of the town by reason of famous events and blah, 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 blah. This is just not true. It's just not true. If you look at the relevant town code, section 126, starting at dash one, it starts by saying that first of all, it does findings. It says there are buildings and things in the town of Poughkeepsie that are of special historic significance or lots of other things. And then in item two, it says, the preservation of such buildings is a matter of public interest, necessarily in harmony with the town master plan and in, will support public health and general welfare and all that. So the, the document that you're voting on supposedly tonight incorrectly states the town law and I think it would be a travesty to actually hold a vote on something that misrepresents the town law. By the way, the thing that was ignored in the resolution is exactly that phrase of historical significance. And that's exactly the most important thing about the Williams buildings. That's what the 22 page application details and along with you know 100 pages of, of uh, appendices details the historical significance of the Williams buildings and this was totally ignored in your resolution I don't see how you can vote on a resolution that has such a faulty basis then those arguing against preservation repeatedly stressed how wonderful the in an institute project would be but preserving Williams doesn't prevent Vassar from building the Inn Institute. They just have to build it somewhere else, for example, across the street. And by the way, the planning board has repeatedly urged Vassar to consider alternative sites for their INI project. But Vassar has, quote, dug in their heels, even though they have 880 acres. Really? There's nowhere else you could build it? Really? How about right across the street? Those arguing against preservation have repeatedly claimed that renovating Williams would cost too much, but their exaggerated sorry, Luke, numbers are based minutes. on an incorrect assumption. That's three minutes, Luke. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, next up is a Larry T R E P A L. Larry. Yes. Hello. Go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm actually, not, I, I did not want to speak on this um, subject. I wanted to talk during the general agenda, so I'm sorry, I didn't know where to sign up for that. That's okay. Do you want me to put a star next to your name and then you can get back on? Yes. Okay. Okay. Next is um, P-A-L-A-H-E-Y. Not sure who that is. Are you there? Uh, yeah, it's it's Paul Leahy. So oh, um, hey, Paul, you're, you're, the... you're going to wait. OK, gotcha. Thank you. Hold on a minute. It just shows up <clears> here <throat> on the chat. 
Okay, um, next is Julie Zabo. Julie? Unmute. Sorry. Unmute, Julie. Yeah, hi there. Hi there. Um, okay, thank you for, um, I, I, my name is Julie Zabo and I was a, a six year resident of Williams. And um, first of all, I wanna say it's, uh, it's kind of, we've been, come, we've been working or fighting this demolition of Williams for two years. And uh, we've gone to a lot of different meetings, town board meetings, planning meetings. And I really appreciate the fact that in this meeting to hear of other things that the town board is considering and I think it was really interesting that in terms of the first presentation, the amount of due diligence that that transportation group did with the community in terms of trying to figure out what the community wants. And from the very beginning, I mean, it's been two years now that we've been trying to get Bastard to talk to us about this and recognize the importance of the historical value of the building and that we don't want the, we want to preserve the history and we want the neighborhood to stay a quiet residential neighborhood. and we have not gotten them to come to the table. And instead what they do is did and do is they present an alternative history and, and that sort of devalue the history of the building in order to get their agenda uh, completed, which is what Susan Slotnick talked about. It has nothing to do with the, town, the people of the residents or the people of the town of Poughkeepsie who have chosen to live here, who have bought houses there, who rent houses there, who bicycle their bicycles down the street and who live in that park and I would really urge the town board to table this resolution at least for a while the other thing is as the people who've been organizing the opposition to this project it's been a David and Goliath kind of situation we're a small neighborhood group we don't have any money or we're basically doing everything ourselves we don't have the lawyers and the consultants and everything everything else uh, that Vassar has but we've still managed uh, last meeting there were almost uh, many people who showed up there's a lot of people who are still not speaking and in this age of COVID it's kind of hard we're not like knocking on people's doors and I'd really urge the the town board to take a minute and really listen to what the other person said that once the building's gone it's not going to be rebuilt once the parking lot is there there's never we're not going to be able to rebuild a t this type of building again and the thing is that as far as the process moving forward for Vassar they still haven't gotten the variance from the zoning board they have not gotten the necessary uh, you know the positive or the, the negative secro review so there are still things that have will not allow the in an institute to be cited at that place. So why can't we just landmark Williams and then Vassar will have to move the thing somewhere else. I mean, it's just, it doesn't, and give us a chance, the people in, the, in this town to fully express our opinions, um, you, know, you know, and and anyway, so that's all I really have to say, but thank you. It's been interesting to hear. Um, I really appreciated the amount of attention and care in, in the Hudson Heritage Project and that, paying attention to the buildings minutes. themselves Thank you, Julie. inside the buildings. And I hope you do the same thing for Williams, the Thank Williams you. complex. Thank you. And next is Joanne, L-U-K-A-C-H-E-R, Joanne. Yes, Joanne Lucasher. Um, I didn't prepare anything. Um, the presentation has just been marvelous. The depth of the and research. Joanne, we can't hear you very well. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I just wanted to compliment the speakers um, who have spoken in favor of the historic designation. Uh, their dedication and depth of research and the, um, the many, many ways of looking at um, the history of this building are, um, it's just wonderful what you've contributed. So I will briefly say I would like to endorse um, historic designation for this building. Um, and I will add that by profession, I'm an historic preservationist. My husband is a um, art historian who's taught at Vassar for over 30 years. Um, he and I highly I sent a um, letter to our, our town representative, Ann Shearson. Uh, I think we've sent several. We sent another this morning to that effect. And um, I would encourage her if she so wishes to share that with the rest of the town board members. So thank you very much. Okay. I'm finished. Thank you. And your name again was Jenny, right? 
or Joanne? Joanne. Okay, so Jenny is next. Jenny, Jenny C O L A B E L L A. Thank you. My name is Jenny Colabella. I work in Poughkeepsie just down the street from Williams Hall. Before Williams was constructed, the female faculty of Vassar College lived in Jenny, dormitories while the male faculty Jenny, were in private housing. Jenny, your sound yes. is a little bizarre. Can, can you see what's going on there? Yes. Is that better? Mm. No. No. Try, try again. Time. All right, just, just go ahead. We'll, we'll work with it. I'm sorry, is that better? I mean, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right, I'll try that. Um, I just wanted to say that the Williams House was constructed so the female faculty had a place to live. And that makes it, I think, historically significant because it represents an important change in the lives and the careers of professional women. The New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation salvaged what they could of Matthew Rasher's home, even though that wasn't completely intact. And so I feel like the woman who worked for him deserved the same because there's much more Williams that can be preserved. Um, and while I'd love to see an inn and an institute, I'd love to save Williams too. And I think that we can have both. I think that Williams is an important piece of our history and we should preserve it for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask um, the members from the audience here to speak next. You want to go ahead? Yep. Here he comes. He's coming back. He's okay. Beth Darlington, I'd like to speak next. I tried to line up in chat. What's your name? Beth Darlington. Okay, I don't see you on here anyway. I'll put you on the list. There's a bunch more people. I'm trying to do it in order. Go ahead. That's fine. Do you guys want to speak here? Neil, do you want to go up and speak? Uh, there is, but I have other people that are speaking about other agenda items. I'm just trying to wrap it all up in order. Well, they did, but they signed up after. Caruso, go ahead, and then Beth, and then the two people here. Caruso. There's a Caruso that would like to speak. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Now I yes. can. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Can, can I start? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Francesco Caruso. I'm, I've lived in uh, William's apartment for 25 years. And I consider that uh, this ensemble of buildings and the loan is the nicest place you can have in Arlington. I ch challenge anybody to convince me otherwise. So let's go a little bit out of the neighborhood. Let's suppose we are driving a car going south on Route 9W. At the end point, we'll reach the town of Newburgh. And on our left, we could see, we can see a very nice park with the lake, nice trees, a wonderful arrangement. One of the best in Newburgh. And you wonder who made this? Well, were the same people that made the loan of we are what we are discussing tonight, the loan around Williams, and are the people that made Central Park, so very capable people. Now let's go now north. We're going down Route 9, and we reach the FDR mansion, the museum. And this museum contains elements that are of interest. You go into the buildings, and you see the appliance, the doorknobs, the fireplace, the lamps, the pearl electrical switches, that are also at Williams. So by saying this, I'm feeling that Vassar Williams apartment is well inserted, not only in the neighborhood, but in the Hudson Valley. And this should be preserved. Now, four or six of this building want to be destroyed by Vassar. It's a large amount. What will be this neighborhood after this? It's impossible even to describe because the new building has nothing to do with the rest. So. Vasa does not recognize this, the value of this building, but you see the city of New York recognizes Richard Hand as the master 
of this work. So he has a, a memorial at Central Park, 71 Street, yeah. in honor of his no. job. And I think uh, I, nobody, I, from what I can tell, there's nobody from Vassar there. Excuse I me. think I think that this should be considered by the board. The resolution and, and the historic okay. preservation of this building is absolutely necessary. So I mean, I think at the best, I think they'll probably table it. I'm I'm listening other voice and I understand that this is trying to attempt to interrupt me. I don't understand. This is the planning board. The planning board still has to come into this. Excuse me. That's in January. If you're not speaking, can you please mute yourself? The historic designation. I'm trying. I did speak. I mean, fairly incoherently. I don't know what's going on. Someone is on their phone, and I don't think she realizes her or microphone is still on. I don't think she's intending to interrupt you, but certainly it's interfering. I it, hope not. Just give me a minute, sir. I think I got it. Okay, can, can I complete? Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you. So, Vassar College neglects the value donation by Harry Williams, one of the first students at Vassar, and even criticized the architectural value of this building made by the hands. This is in great contrast with the recognition that the builders have elsewhere in U.S. And as I said, this Exeter monument commemorating Richard Hunt achievement located in Central Park is in recognition of the fact that they made the facade of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty, to many buildings in Fifth Avenue, New York, but three of the 50 most iconic buildings in the country, included a bit more in, in, in uh, um, I think it's in, in North Carolina. I think I have finished. Thank you very much. And please consider the needs of the neighborhood, not of the donors. Thank you. Okay, and next I have Beth. Beth, who's waving your hand, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Beth Darlington, I live at uh, 16 Vassar Lake Drive uh, in a Vassar house on Vassar property. I came to Poughkeepsie in 1967 to join Vassar's Department of English, and I retired a few years ago after nearly half a century of teaching at the college. During that time, I helped to establish programs in women's studies and Victorian studies, which led me to teach several courses in Vassar history that helped me recognize the value of the college's traditions and historical significance. Two Vassar buildings are currently listed on the National Register of Historic Landmarks, including Main Hall and the Mariah Mitchell Observatory. I hope that Williams House will join them one day. Locally, nationally, and internationally, members of Vassar's community have contributed significantly to the preservation of historical places. The most famous is Jackie Kennedy, a Vassar alumna from the class of 1951, although she did not complete her degree at the college. When John Kennedy became president in 1961, she appointed a fine arts committee to oversee the restoration of the White House and preserve its architecture character. Later, she joined other preservationists to advocate for the restoration of Grand Central Station in New York. When it was threatened for demolition, she said, we've all heard that it's too late, but even in the 11th hour, it's not too late. In 1978, she and her followers won their case. Today, many of us give Jackie Kennedy credit for the preservation of Grand Central Station. Without her vision and passionate advocacy, the building would have been demolished, gone. Another member of the Vassar community whose work has played a powerful role in historical preservation is the late professor of art, Andrew Tallon. He developed sophisticated techniques for photographing buildings of architectural significance, and his digital photographs of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris have proved essential in the restoration of the building after a fire destroyed much of its roof, a spire, and stained glass windows in April of 2019. Closer to home, many Vassar faculty members have made a commitment to preserving the character of historic homes in Poughkeepsie. One is the late E.K. Whedon, Jr., who purchased a Victorian house in downtown Poughkeepsie and meticulously restored it and its garden. Workers on the restoration expressed their gratitude and warm friendship to him by placing a plaque beside the front door stating that his dedication to the house kept trade workers employed, honored the integrity of how homes were built and added to the well-being of the street and community. Vassar alumni and alumni have told me that they are shocked and outraged to learn of the college's plan 
to demolish Williams, thus failing both to honor a precious heritage and to respect a community on College Avenue. I sincerely hope that the town board will vote to preserve Williams House and the green space adjoining it rather than demolishing them. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Next is Gretchen. Gretchen L-I-E-B, are you there? She's on there. I mean, yes, it's Gretchen Lieb. Go ahead. And I'm very reluctant to speak. I'm an employee of the college. I'm a librarian. I've been an employee of the college for 20 years. I respect the bind that they're in. But I felt compelled. Um, the window on my left, this is, I live at 157 College. I look out on 159 College and beyond it, Williams. And on a snowy night like tonight, and when I was walking my dog, I saw the snow start to collect on the roofs. This historic building and the Greens historic feeling affect our whole neighborhood, as Susan Zlotnick so eloquently spoke to. It's what gives us a cohesion and an entrance. And to think of that, of those buildings being replaced with this over 60 lot parking lot being sanded, salted, and plowed tonight, it just really, I don't see how we come back from this as a neighborhood. And as much as I respect and understand, I, I feel terrible about it, but I, I am opposed and I've lived in Williams. I respect its historical importance. I think everyone's spoken to that and what it means in the history of women's colleges. And I hope that the college will understand. I'm speaking out because I really relate that if we, if you go ahead and do this, there's no coming back and we will have an undistinguished hotel on our, right next door that could be anywhere. It could be where the Kmart is, the big abandoned lots that are right around the corner. So there are many locations where something like this could be, not on a beautiful green and a historic building. And I thank you all for giving this the consideration it's due because there's just no coming back if, if we tear this down. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Doreen? Doreen? Oh, sorry, I was trying to unmute. That's okay, okay. Um, I, have, I have a couple um, questions on the agenda items. Jay, did I hear you say in the beginning that there was a special consent item? Correct. There's one special consent what? item there. It's Yeah, there's one special consent. It's, it's a, a budget, budget it's a modification. Budget transfer for the police department. Okay, so that's totally within the uh, police department? Correct. It's to move the budget okay. transfer to possibly purchase a piece of equipment that we're discussing. Okay, I, I asked because I did not see that in any of the documents posted. So, okay, um, item numbers uh, six and seven about the ZBA members. Uh, again, I just like to verify: uh, are they current town residents? Yes, they are. Okay, agenda item number five, where um, as far as the grant writing, so it says that they're um, they're being paid three thousand dollars a month not contingent upon success, successful awarding of funds. So, so basically there's no criteria as to what they're getting paid that $3,000 a month for? No, Doreen, there's a different outlook. We, before we went and we got the grants, they are supposed to be going out getting the grants for us. And there is a time frame of, I think it's 60 days that we can get out of this clause if we feel they're not doing the work. It's about 60% more than what we're paying the last grant writer but the last grant writer, we had to go and get all the grants and send them to him and have him do the work. Once we got the grants, this company will be searching out grants for us. They work for multiple companies in Westchester. We are the first company in Dutchess County that they will be working for. And we've had multiple discussions with them and we reached out to a, another company and they weren't interested in trying this different approach. We've done very well at getting grants, but I think we need a different approach that can reach out further than what we have now to try to bring more grants in because the town was very successful before what we could find, but we're not the grant writer and they have a better arms reach to find regular grants, state grants, federal and private grants. 
Okay, so you'll be evaluating them after potentially uh, 60 days to see how this is going? Yes, and Doreen, they will also give us um, quarterly reports on what they've applied for, what they found for us, and what they have to look for us after we meet with them to discuss what we're looking to do going forward. That will now put them on their mission to go out and see what they can find for us. Okay, um, thank you. And then I just have one more comment about uh, Williams. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry to see that those buildings are going to be demolished, but can I say it, it surprises me? No, because even though as someone suggested, you know, the planning board um, asked them to consider alternative sites and they said, no, once Vassar digs their heels in, uh, they're, they're not going to admit that, uh, you know, if, if they potentially made a mistake or whatever, it's just sort of like them uh, with their deer killing, you know, baiting and shooting the deer. They'll never back down from that once they started it. So uh, again, I'm sorry to see, uh, to see the uh, decision that's being made by the town, but you know, it, it's just not surprising. Thank you. Doreen, that, that agreement actually can be terminated on 30 days written notice. So, and I think it's, I think it's a good approach as far as what, the way that we're doing it with the grant writing this, this time around. So hopefully it works out and it's positive for the town, but if it's not, we, we have, we have the ability to get out within 30 days with 30 days written notice. Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks Doreen. And then the last from I can see is Miriam would like to speak. And then I have two more about um, Williams. Miriam, are you there? Uh, yes. Um, so uh, thank you for letting me speak. My name is Miriam Rossi, and I've been a resident of Arlington for 38 years. Uh, I'm a professor of chemistry at Vassar College. And I've never been against Vassar building in, in an institute. And my objection from the beginning, as uh, Julie Zabo said before, for two years, my objection is regarding the demolition of Williams and destruction of the green space. Uh, the demolition of Williams would be disrespectful towards those who live in the immediate neighborhood. Many of the residents have spoken out about this very eloquently, and I really appreciate their comments. Um, the area that's slated for development has not changed in 100 years. In fact, the Arlington neighborhood has grown around it and embraced its appeal as can be seen by the Tudor style details on the Juliet Theater and the buildings on College View. Additionally, demolition is disrespectful to the memory of an enlightened 1870 alumna who gave $100,000 in 1920. That is worth $1.4 million today. That took a while for me, you know, it, it took some time for me to sink in, um, but that's quite a sum. Uh, and the inconsistency of snubbing this historic collection of buildings and accompanying green space built by the most important American architects and landscape engineers at the time to build a newer set of buildings paid for by a more recent alumni gift is disgraceful from my point of view. Ultimately, this Vassar plan has become a divisive issue, which seems pointless since all constituents, those interested in having an in and conference center and those interested in the preservation of Williams can find common ground by building a hotel and conference center elsewhere. I urge you as our elected representatives to consider the arguments for preservation to save the beautiful Tudor buildings from demolition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miriam. Now I'm gonna to move to Neil. Neil, you're- Thank you're, you so much. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I appreciate it. I just want to briefly review the definition of a landmark so we're all clear on the code. It's any place, structure, building of historic value or aesthetic interest by reason of architectural design or as part of the development heritage or cultural Can you characteristics hold on a minute, Neil? of the town. What? It's on. Oh, Neil, sorry, what did you say? Neil, tap your mic. Tap your mic. Yeah, it's on. Just move a little bit closer if you can to it. Oh, thank you. It's probably the mask. Yeah. Um, 
So there are four criteria, and it's any one of them. As you've heard tonight, a Williams actually meets uh, each one of those. There, are, you only need one, but it meets all four. It's the a historic building in terms of uh, the history of the women who lived there. The Harriet Trumbull Williams was uh, uh, this very distinguished person who gave the money. She was noted by uh, Theodore Roosevelt for her treatment of workers, and the Williams name lives today it, through the same company, the Williams Tool Snap-on, with the motto, ironically, our heritage is your future. So this is a major company linked to the same name of the building we're trying to preserve. Um, you've heard about the architects, Hunt and Hunts, who designed the Metropolitan Museum of, Arc, of Art, and the Olmsted brothers who've designed this whole parcel. Um, it's a beautiful building around which our neighborhood has grown. I live very close to it in the backyard of this, behind Alumni House. It has, it's famous because of the events that have, and people who've lived there. It's a um, historic structure because of the people who have added so much to our culture and society by living there and in the town of Poughkeepsie. Um, just a year after suffrage, the groundbreaking for Williams Hall was covered all over the media. You've heard about the uniqueness of the architectural conservation and design, the various Tudor features. You can see all that in some of the documentation that will be submitted. I want to thank you all for the careful consideration you're giving to the um, Hudson Heritage Project and the exquisite attention to detail that those developers are um, giving to the preservation of something that's been an important part of town history. We would like the same thing for this parcel. And so we'd like to link the overall consciousness of the beauty and history of the town of Poughkeepsie with the possibility for ongoing development. I think everybody who spoke tonight is in favor of Vassar's Conference Center, where it will not disrupt a historical and peaceful, bucolic, wonderful neighborhood that so many of us have um, lived in, invested in, pay taxes in, precisely because of the character of this irreplaceable building. I thank you for your attention to all of these historic projects in the town of Poughkeepsie. I'm proud to be a member of the town. I'm proud to work in a very part-time capacity for Vassar College. I'm in no way opposed to their plans for this development as long as it doesn't come at such a terrible cost. Thank you all. Thank you. And Jennifer? Yeah, if you want to just set the box down, that'd be great. Okay. You put it on a chair. Thank you for meeting tonight and for your service to the town and on behalf of the people of Poughkeepsie. I am the uh, one of three coordinators of the Arlington Neighborhood Association. While our leadership is a small group of five or six, I speak representing the 305 people who've reached out to us and asked us to speak on their behalf. Uh, we have also retained an attorney in the last 24 hours dedicated to landmark preservation based on the contents of the resolution that was only released last night. As my husband mentioned, um, the law that was cited in the resolution as a general definition of historically relevant buildings is not the town's definition of a landmark. Um, the four um, historic value, aesthetic interest by reason of its antiquity or age, the uniqueness of its design, and its relevance to the town have all been proven, um, not only by us, but by um, state and national and local officials, including SHPO, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, the New York State Preservation League, the Town of Poughkeepsie Historic Preservation Commission, the Town of Poughkeepsie Reconnaissance Level Historic S Survey, three Dutchess County legislators, a state legislator, as well as SLAM Architects, the Getty Report, Neil Larson, Aaron Tobin, Ellen Stewart, Harvey Flad, Nicholas Adams, 
all experts in preservation. The resolution that you're voting on tonight mentions the interior as justification. The interior of a building is not part of the justification for landmark preservation. Um, it says that the community members who wrote you did not talk about its history, but community consciousness of history is not a criterion for preservation, but is a reason for preservation. We want the community and the world to know about this very important place and its history. The level of deterioration of a building is not a factor in landmark designation. It is a reason for landmark preservation. Preservation fixes the issue with letting our historic landmarks deteriorate. SLAM architects hired by Vassar wrote, Williams, it's a national architectural firm. Williams does remain fundamentally sound and is a key element of the Raymond Avenue streetscape. Vassar and the town are not actually separate. The history of Vassar is the history of the town and the people who work and live there live and work in the town and are begging you to listen. Unfortunately, Vassar College did not hold by the Lincoln Institute's standards for practice with town and gown and consult with the community at all. <clears throat> Most of the 50 letters against preservation primarily reference the Innan Institute as the reason to tear down Williams, but the 205 letters that you received for preservation all said we support the Innan Institute at another location and it doesn't require destruction. The town plan says that Vassar College has isolated itself from Arlington businesses and asks that Vassar develop neighborhood interchange along, develop along College View Avenue that is in the town master plan on page 62. It's the, your decision tonight says that Williams is not noted in historic surveys, but it's specifically noted 157 to 171 College in the town's survey of historic resources. That's three minutes. Jen. Thank you. I thank you so much for consideration of our applications. I submitted what it seems that maybe you never had the chance to review, which is our application with all of the evidence for yeah, preservation we, we of Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up is Phyllis Capone. Phyllis? Are you there, Phyllis? Yes, um, I just wanted to thank the board for considering my appointment as a regular member of the town ZBA. I've been serving on the ZBA as an alternate for a while now. And um, over my tenure there, I've come to enjoy uh, working on the ZBA. And I find myself learning something new about the nuances of the code every month. And I just wanted to thank the board for the opportunity to continue. That was all. Thank you, Phyllis. Larry, Larry, you there? Larry Trapel? If I'm saying that right. Yes, hello. Yep, hi, Larry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, tonight, I'm actually speaking about the. Um, uh, the Vassar deer hunt. Um, that would be something that has to be after the agenda. Yes. Yeah, this is That's um, what I, well, I said. I was not going to speak till later. So yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know what you were speaking about. I thought it was an agenda item. Oh. I'll, I'll keep you uh, posted. So this is at the very end of the meeting. I yeah, guess, that right? has to be the very yes. end of the meeting. Um, okay. Which you know, I don't know how long. Um, Paul, Few hours. Uh, yeah, hang on. Paul Leahy, you're next. Paul. Paul, you there? I am. Okay. I am. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. So I, I'm the current chair of the ZBA, and I, I, um, I encourage you to uh, reappoint Christine to uh, her position on the ZBA and to move um, Phyllis. Um, from an alternate into a full-time position, which was when I moved uh, to the chair that opened up another Ward 3 position. So I encourage you to uh, make those appointments. Uh, each of them have been, uh, they've well attended, they are, they're involved, uh, they pay attention, they have good questions, and they, they've offered a lot to uh, our decisions. And I encourage you to make those appointments. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Okay, is there, any, is there anybody else that would like to speak on an agenda item? Please raise your hand. I think we are at the end of the long line. Motion to resume the rules. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Carlos? Aye. Aye. Bill, you need to unmute. Okay. Okay. I see it. That's okay. Uh, I am, me and computers, we don't mix. Resolution two, 
12-2 of 2020. Whereas August 3rd, 2020, the town board received an application by a group named the Arlington Neighborhood Association here and after applicant to designate as a landmark pursuant to section 126-7 of the town code, the site known as the Williams Hall Complex of Vassar College, located on College Avenue, Poughkeepsie, New York, a grid number 134689-6161-12-795630 through 0000 here and after the site. And whereas on October 30th, 2020, the Historic Preservation Commission of the Town of Poughkeepsie made a recommendation to the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie for the designation of the site as a historic landmark. And whereas pursuant to chapter 126 of the code of the town of Poughkeepsie, a public hearing was held on December 2nd, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the town hall, town of Poughkeepsie, one over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York. Concerning such designation, public notice being given for said hearing and all interested parties having an opportunity to be heard. And whereas the legal notice of a public hearing was posted on November 6, 2020 and published in the Poughkeepsie Journal on November 17, 2020. And whereas said action is a type two action pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act that no such further environmental review is necessary. Now therefore be it resolved that for the reasons set forth in the attached decision, the town board of the town of Kipsey hereby declines to designate the site a historic landmark pursuant to chapter 126 of the code of the town of Kipsey, and be it further resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to give appropriate notification as required by the town code. So moved. Second, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, do you want me to read the uh, decision on the application into the record or just the, the hard copy okay? I think the hard copy is okay. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Yeah, I just I just want to disclose, I have a family member that uh, works at Vassar College, but you know, getting there's no direct or indirect financial impact on me re regarding this. So I just want to put that out there. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, I'd like to say, you know, part of the reason why we're here tonight discussing this is Vassar has been a good neighbor to Poughkeepsie and to the neighborhood. And they've allowed the public to use this green space, whereas they, they had followed their original plans, they would have walled it off and they had plans for private gardens and an aviary and things like that. And if they had done that and kept it private and didn't allow us on it, we probably wouldn't have even noticed this. And a prime example of that is the Mud Science Building. That was torn down two, three years ago on the campus. None of us noticed it. There was no outcry about that. It's just was removed and now there's open space there. But due to the generosity, we have used this green space. We've had farmer's markets on it. We've had concerts on it. We've had yoga classes on it. People have really used it and loved it and they become attached to the green space. And that has also resulted in us being attached to the Williams and the people who live there. And I've had one person describe to me as this, just this lovely little enclave there where it opens up into the neighborhood and it just really belongs there. And well, while this resolution claims it's not historic, in our code, you also have to address the uh, antiquity and I don't see anything in this resolution that says that it shouldn't be designated because of some reason that it doesn't have the necessary antiquity to be designated. So I really would like to see the resolution address that before we move on with this. And also I've heard from so many people on this. We're, I'm approaching almost 400 emails on this, both for and against the resolution um, designating it. And I've had several people that I really respect and admire come forward and lobby me for this. So I am going to be voting against this. I'm going to be voting in favor of designating against declining this resolution. 
But that also being said, I just want to make sure that this is crystal clear. In the town code, there's nothing that we can force the restoration mm -hmm. of these buildings. They're still Vassar's property, and it's up to Vassar to decide what to do with them. And mm -hmm. the only thing the code requires is that the appearance from the road remains basically the way it is today. So they can let them sit there empty. There's nothing we could do to force them to turn them back into apartments or have another use for them and invest money in them. And frankly, that's all I have to say about this. Oh, and also I've been told that there's, and I, I didn't get the list, the um, paperwork dropped off by uh, Jennifer contains some items that she'd also like us to look at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else on the board got anything to discuss? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion passes 5-1. Jessica? I'm getting there. Hang on one second. Okay. I'm scrolling through. Okay. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby accept with appreciation a donation of $100 from Mr. Demetrios Volegres, and be it further resolved that said donations were made to our police department in appreciation of its responsiveness will be used to offset police department needs. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Resolved, the town board town of Poughkeepsie does hereby set the 20th day of January 2021 at 7 p.m. at the town hall town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York, as and for the time, date, and place of a public hearing to consider local law amendments to the town code chapter 195 entitled Vehicle and Traffic, specifically 195.44, Schedule 9, stop intersections with the language to be added under line <coughs> language to be deleted uh, as follows. Add 195.44, Schedule 9, stop intersections. Stop sign on uh, Old Mill Drive, direction of travel east at intersection Saddle Rock Drive, uh, Bridal Lane southeast and Saddle Rock Drive, and be a further resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does determine that this traffic control change is a type two action requiring no environmental review and be a further resolved that said local law, if adopted, shall become effective immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State. So moved. Second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Be resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie finds that it would be in the best interest of the town and does hereby authorize the supervisor to execute a contract between the town of Poughkeepsie and Millennium Strategies LLC to provide grant writing services without solicitation of additional proposals pursuant to town procurement policy, Article 3C, which contracts will be in effect from December 1st 2020 through November 30th, 2021, and renewable from year to year as agreed by the parties in substantially the same form as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion. Second. I would just like to make one change that for vote on. It should be January 1st, 2021. January 1st. Okay. Instead of November 30th? No, instead of December 1st. Oh. It should be January 1st. Yeah, because that's passed. Yes. Was that a typo? Yeah. We started a couple weeks ago. All those in favor of the change? Aye. 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 Opposed? All those in favor of the resolution? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0 both times. Okay. Be it resolved, the town board of the town Poughkeepsie does hereby accept the resignation of Phyllis Capone, who presently serves as an alternate member on the town of Poughkeepsie Zoning Board of Appeals and appoint her to serve as a regular member of the Town of Poughkeepsie Zoning Board of Appeals through the end of 2021, effective immediately, so moved. Second. We got a motion. I second. thought it was, excuse me, I thought it was to the end of 2024. No, Bill. She's, no. I thought so too, but this new resolution, amended resolution came out, and I don't understand why you aren't allowing you to fill Paul's out. That's probably, oh, is she yeah. filling the, is she filling um, the spot gentlemen. of a current person? Bill. Paul, Lee, he, Paul Lee didn't resign, so she wouldn't be filling his spot. Correct. Oh, okay. So then it can so only she'd be. be she'd, 
she'd be filling whatever spot is currently open, which I believe is Jim Challies. Jim right? Challies. Okay. She's right, so that's no, Jim Challies. Jim Challies is not open because Christine was already put in that. The no, next resolution we're voting on. Well, I know that um, that um, Paul Leahy took his term with him when he went, so I think that that. Yeah, that the open is, term is Jim Challies' spot for one year. Um, right. One year. Well, how can okay. it be Jim Challies' spot? Because that's the only open spot. He was. He. But he was. He was chair. No, he. And you get appointed to a spot, though. You're, when when you step out, your term is that position is what's open. Yeah. Paul yeah. Leahy. Paul Leahy didn't resign. He just spoke to no, him. Right. He's chair. So his him. spot's not open. So she couldn't be filling his spot. Yeah. Paul Leahy takes his term with him where he goes. The open spot okay. is what stays open. It so was a little confusing until we figured it out okay. today, yeah. but she, you know. She All right, could. so the correct date is. It's correct. The end of 20. December 31st, 2021. Correct. Right. 2021. It's okay. on the amended resolution yep. that everybody got. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye for the amendment. Yep. Opposed? No, it's it's already been amended. Yeah, it's amended. Okay. I read the amended one. It's an amended resolution. Okay. It's all fine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, Aye. motion passes 6 0. Sorry. Be resolved, the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie. Number seven. Be resolved, the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby reappoint Christine Sorcelli to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a seven year term commencing on January 1st, 2021, with the termination date of December 31st, 2027. So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Um, resolution number 8. Be resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the private road name for identification purposes only for the woods at Cliffdale subdivision off Spacken Hill Road as follows. Number 1, Cliffdale Court. And be it further resolved that upon a adoption of this resolution and said resolution shall be sent to the 911 facilities for Dutchess County by the town clerk of the town of Poughkeepsie. So moved. We have motion. We have a second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby promote Amanda Vale to the full-time position of senior clerk for the town of Poughkeepsie accounting department at the CSEA grade six, step three salary of $24 and 36 cents per hour, effective January 4th, 2021, which promotion is subject to a probationary period of not less than eight nor more than 26 weeks per civil service law and be it further resolved that the town supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutchess oh, wow. County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Wow. Second. Motion second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Who seconded that? I missed it. Bill, I think. Those aren't my kids. I'm just stating that for the record. <laughs> Step up. <laughs> I'll have to read. Who seconded that? I don't know. I'll, I'll second it. All right. Whatever. Motion, all those in favor? All right. All right. Motion passes 6 0. Mm -hmm. uh, be resolved, Town Board, Town of Kipsey, to hereby appoint Joan Picard to the full time position of senior account clerk for the Town of Kipsey Water Department at the CSEA grade six, step two salary of $23.40 per hour, effective December 28, 2020, which appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than eight no more than 26 weeks per civil service law to be it further resolved that the town supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutch County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Be resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby appoint Cynthia Adams to the permanent part-time position of Town of Poughkeepsie Personnel Administrator at $25 per hour for not more than 20 hours per week effective immediately, which appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than eight nor more than 26 weeks per civil service law, and be it further resolved that the Town Supervisor is authorized to execute and file 
all documentation required by the Dutchess County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Be resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby promote Thomas Coogan to the position of full-time water superintendent of the Town Water Department at a salary of $45.67 per hour effective Friday, January 1st, 2021, which appointment is subject to a probation period of not less than eight, nor more than 26 weeks per civil service law. Be further resolved the Town Supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutchess County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Tom happens to be here tonight. Congratulations, Tom. I know you're just anxiously waiting to go out and start your plowing for the night. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Congratulations. Be it resolved, the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby to promote Todd Miller Jr. to the position of full-time Deputy Water Superintendent with the Town Water Department the salary of $36.06 per hour, effective Friday, January 1st, 2021, which appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than eight, no more than 26 weeks per civil service law. Be it further resolved, the Town Supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutchess County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment, so moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and second. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Todd is also here with his hands on his plow. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tom. Good luck. Welcome, welcome aboard so far. In the last few months, you guys have both done a great job. So Congrats to you both. Congratulations. Resolution number 14, whereas the town of Poughkeepsie has the opportunity to apply for a new local champions grant program in the amount of $8,000 that is specifically designed to support local municipalities that are working on the New York State Climate Smart Communities Program. And this grant will help the town to reach the bronze certification now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie hereby ratifies the supervisor's execution of a participation agreement allowing the town to apply to said local champion grant uh, grant program. So moved. Okay. Second. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Resolution number 15, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby accept the minutes for the following 2020 town board meeting to it. October 7th, 2020, regular town board meeting. October 21st, 2020, regular town board meeting. November 4th, 2020, regular town board meeting. November 18th, 2020, committee of the whole regular town board meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Number 16 is a notice of claim for illegal, Bedaya versus the town. Okay, 17. Whereas ABD Stratford, LLC Stratford, received Town of Poughkeepsie Planning Board approval for the Stratford Farm subdivision as shown on Dutch County Filed Subdivision Map 11639 on August 18th, 1999, and as pursuant to that approval delivered to the Town of Poughkeepsie, in a roquefort offer of succession and dedicated dated June uh, 19, 2018 for several streets, highways, easements, personal property improvements and areas in Stratford thereby offered for dedication of the town for public use. Whereas as security for the performance of subdivision, subdivision approvals obligations, Stratford has delivered to the town bonding security and other agreements relating to the improvements shown on subdivision map 11639, which Security agreements were in part collateralized by two surety bonds, and whereas the Dutch County Department of Behavior and Community Health requires the town to own the water booster station located on subdivision lot 11, prior to the issuance of certificates to operate the same, the town seeks hereby to accept the dedication of the water booster station so that the certificate to operate may be issued by the Dutch County Department of Behavior 
and community health. And whereas the town engineer, as detailed on the December 9th, 2020 bond estimate at Exhibit A, Annex has advised that the current surety bonds for phases one and four may be replaced with a maintenance bond, and the surety bonds for phases two and three may be may and shall continue to be held in its current amount shall also secure the top paving course for Kensington Lane, and therefore be resolved that the supervisor or his designees are authorized to release the amended $1,231,334,000 surety bond 0371104 of International Fidelity Insurance Company for phases one and four of the subdivision upon replacement of it with a maintenance bond for $215,400 and to continue to hold the August 13, 2020, $219,057 site improvement bond 8000038789 of Atlantic Specialty Insurance Company as security for phases two and three, which includes $135,296,000 as security for the completion of the top paving course for Kenston Lane and the release from escrow and record these deeds, those deeds and easements received from Stratford and the offer which are listed on Exhibit B here to provide it. However, the easement listed in the offer as B6 property description Z for utility and water line easement shall be accepted and recorded in its amended form as most recently offered by the town by documents dated December 14th, 2018, all provided that one Stratford shall deliver such proof of title as to all easements and deeds as may be required by the attorney of the town and proof of continuing liability insurance as required for round roads and improvements covered by performance bonds by the Town of Poughkeepsie Code 177-32 and two, Stratford shall deliver confirmation from the Atlantic specialty bond, include completion of the top paving course for Kenston Lane, and three, Stratford shall deliver a bill of sale conveying a good title, all warranties for all personal property, fixtures, equipment, appurtenances, improvements, and structure, which are being accepted by the Town. Four, the town shall receive Dutchess County Department of Behavior and Community Health permission to operate the water booster station located on subdivision lot 11. And five, all documents to be in the form acceptable to the supervisor and the town engineer and the town attorney for the town. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions on this one? I think, Jim, you wanted to say something about this? Before, ahead, before you vote, if, if I just could for the minute. Um, in condition four, we mentioned uh, needing to get uh, an approval from uh, the county behavior and community health. And uh, it's kind of a chicken and egg. Um, we, uh, the town, uh, need to know we can operate that booster station uh, before we accept it. And on the other hand, the county, which has been very helpful here, um, says we'll only give an operating certificate uh, if we get proof of ownership. Um, in order to have an exchange of those two uh, between us and the county, there are a couple of open issues, um, a fence, a gate, uh, a question of pressure. Um, I am told, don't know personally, but I'm told that those things have been uh, either resolved or are very close. Okay, Thomas says they've all been resolved. The information I had was they're close. My point is, we're looking to do an exchange basically with the health department. You know, we get the certificate, um, we'll, we'll give you the approval that the board is adopting tonight. And so there may be some delay. I'm hopeful that it won't be that long. I appreciate the work that the uh, developer's attorney did, or the developer's attorney, our engineer, uh, and the county health department. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And who, who seconded that, pardon me? Um, Stefan. Me. Stefan Thank did. You. Thank you. Motion passes 6 0. <clears throat> Who's not going? 18. Ann, you want to read 18? I'm sorry, I was able to download it. I don't have it. Right, I got it. That's okay. okay. Being resolved, the Town Board of Tampa Kitsch is hereby grant special consent to the following items to wit, one, authorize. Control or budget modification for the police department and be a further resolved that upon objection of any member of the town board, an item may be removed from the list and voted on separately. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. 
I'll do this one. Be it resolved, the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie is hereby modified a 2020 budget pursuant to the attached budgetary transfer request form submitted by the Comptroller to transfer budget money for the Police Department account as follows from B3120-0103 overtime, $49,500, to B3120-0211 other equipment, $49,500, so moved. Second. Is there a motion and a second? Any questions on that one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. That brings us to the end of our board meeting. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for <coughs> comment on any other item not pertaining to the meeting. Second. Second. All those um, in favor? Doreen has her hand Aye. raised. Doreen? Hi, uh, yes, uh, I have a question about the, uh, and this has to do with the uh, joint water plant finances. So at the last uh, joint water board meeting, but it was after the public comment period, so I was not able to ask about this, and oftentimes questions aren't answered there anyway, it's just comments, um, that the city had not yet deposited their quarterly payment into the joint water plant account. So the town had made their payment, but the payment that was due October 1st from the uh, city was not made. And this was as of, uh, I think, December 1st. So uh, if I don't know if uh, Jay or Bill, who are on the um, Joint Water Board representing the town, if they want to... Uh, Marine, I'll reach out tomorrow and find out that answer because you are correct. It was not paid at that time, and the reason behind it was that there'd be a... When they did the reconciliation at the end of the year, there'd be money coming back, but they still should be paying it, and everybody should be giving it back at the end of the year. I will reach out first thing when I get in tomorrow. Yeah, and I would like to, um, to, to remind uh, you guys as part of the Water Board that... Um, you're supposed to be getting a status on those payments at the um, meeting, the first meeting after the payments are due, and that has not been happening. No. And uh, we've been personally you know, calling Doreen. You're right; it's not showed up at the board meeting, but we've been calling to make sure they were paid as as we were making sure that they matched uh, Dutchess County water and wastewater payments. So we're getting our correct share on that end since that that has um been resolved so we are reaching out but we'll make a point that at the meetings that we bring up so the public does know where that money stands yeah and the reconciliation i don't have to tell you always gets dragged out so um yeah. you know again it's my personal opinion they should be making their payments when when they're supposed to Agreed. all right Doreen, thank you Doreen, yes? as you, i know you know I went through a six year battle over this and I pay very close attention to it and I made the phone call and it should have been corrected by now. Okay, and well I agree I'll... with Jay, we should they should be making their payment and then they get their credit. Right, that's that's true and and again, uh, one of those resolutions did say that it uh, is to be discussed at the um, at the meeting, so it would be good if that could be adhered to. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doreen. Larry, I'm so sorry. You should have actually went first, but go ahead, Larry. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Larry. Go okay. ahead. Um, I'm a resident of Poughkeepsie, and um, I just wanted to state my objection to the uh, planned killing of deer again in the Vassar Eco Preserve. Um, this will take place sometime in December or January. They don't really give you the exact date until very close to when it happens. So the slaughter has taken place for a number of years, and I think, just think it's unwarranted, it's cruel, it's against the objections of many uh, local Poughkeepsie residents. Um, the city does not allow it, so the killing takes place only in the lower half of the preserve, um, as that is in the sixth ward of the town. Uh, it's performed by baiting deer in with corn, and then the uh, they shooting them as they lure them in and they start shooting them again uh, for several nights with the high powered rifles. Now, I've recently spoken to many students and observers who were often there 
And um, they are saying that without exception, there are hardly any deer in there now, right now anyway. So there's really no reason to do this. And this is why they like to lure the deer, deer in by putting the corn out for several weeks so that the deer start to know that there's corn in there. And then it gives them a chance to shoot as many as they want. Um, the property manager is Terry Van Camp has stated that it's a pristine forest and that it must be preserved, but this is um, way off base. This place has, as you know, has farm, it has a farming area, soccer fields, um, big hiking trails, a sewer system that runs underneath it. So I'd hardly call it a forest preserve. It's only um, about a square mile long. So I'd like to know, um, if possible, what each person, what each board member's opinion is about this. If you won't state that tonight, then please post it somewhere. And um, I also th have heard that uh, the the board the board feels like they have no power over Vassar in controlling this. I don't think that's true. But even if they think it's true, even if you think it's true, you could still make a recommendation to Vassar that you um, do not want this to occur. And they may take that seriously. Okay, then. Um, um, thank I, you. I didn't realize that they had continued to do that year after year. I thought they were doing it at a certain point in time because they had to call a herd, and then that was it. Um, I'm I'm the new guy on the board, so I did, I I okay. don't know if this has come before the board um, over the past few years. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't hunt, but at least I understand hunting and that there's a sport to it, and that they're you know, there, there's, there's something there, but when you feed them and then you, you know, blow their heads off or whatever you do with a high powered rifle, it, it just, it, yeah, it doesn't seem right to me. Um, and like I said, I, I thought when they first proposed it, it was a specific issue of the overpopulation and it was more of a one and done than they're going to do it every year. I guess maybe they just don't publicize it as much, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. I, I, you know, I, 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 I have deer in my yard, backyard. I no longer get tulips, but I'm okay with that. Um, you know, so, you know, there's things that we all live with as a result of the deer. I also thought there was an issue as far as the health of the deer population and there was some sort of disease going around that was, was reducing the population. So that's what I say. I, I'm just sort of surprised that they're still doing it. Stefan, along the line Again, of what you said, and Larry, um, I agree. Uh, They've done it just about every year. I don't know if they've missed a year. They don't, they notify us the first couple of years, but along the line, what you said about the deer population, there has been a huge decrease due to the illness that they've got this year. And this was one of the areas up around here that was hit pretty hard. So I'm gonna reach out over there to the, the farm and the school to see what's going on because the deer population took a huge hit this year. I know our highway department picked up, I'm gonna say hundreds, you know, this year that were found down along the water waterway. So is the population as big as it was? I don't I don't know. I'll reach out and try to find out. Thank you. Yes. It's definitely not. I know the place very well. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Anybody else? Larry, I just admittedly don't know enough about it. It's never come before the board since I've been on. I don't know much about deer population in our area to start. And then uh with faster so before i can state any sort of an opinion i have to do a little research myself but i'm happy to get back to you once i've done that okay. yeah and the call has gone on every year as being one of the neighbors that my backyard faces the um faster farm that we do receive a letter from them every year telling us that the call is going on and i agree with larry i used to have more deer in my backyard and i've seen like two in the neighborhood so far so the number is way down and i mean this would be to Vassar's benefit too, that they wouldn't have to spend money on the cull. And I know that they do do a count of the deer. So maybe the deer population is already right to a point where it, it's not necessary. Yeah, I was under the impression this was a one and done a couple of years ago. So I don't quite understand no. why they're still going every year, but. No, it's, it's, it's been every year. Okay. Since 2010. It seems I can, sad to uh, me, I don't like it. Speak for some of the people in my ward who live up on Pleasant Ridge and down both sides of the hill that abut the property uh, where the uh, little bit of a swamp is. And they have all kinds of deer fences. And one of the things that I 
here when I knock on those doors every other year is about the deer. So I don't know how many are in the herd. I don't know how many you need per acre. I don't know any of those numbers. And I like the other council members, I haven't heard them coming, telling us they're doing it. So I didn't think it was going on anymore. Okay. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that, that would show, like to speak? That shows how hidden it is if none of you, if many of you don't, don't even know that it still happens. Does anybody else like to speak? Please raise your hand. I see no one. Motion is on the rules. Second. All those in favor? Second. Aye. 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 A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody, everybody enjoy the holiday and be safe out there driving with the storm today and stay home if possible. There's no need to be out in the roads. Be safe. Hopefully we've hunkered out enough food this year that we can survive 24 or 48 hours without going out in the streets. That'll give the highway departments and all the other departments that are working together to clear the streets and be a little bit patient with COVID-19. The county, the state, and even the town have had issues. So. <laughs> We will be doing our best out there working as a team to get the roads cleared as quick as possible. So please stay home and make it as safe as possible now until they clear the streets in the morning. Yeah, and if I could just say something really quick. My office is a little bit short-staffed from now to the beginning of the year. So if anybody's planning on coming in between the hours of 1130 and 1, if they could call first to make sure that it's staffed, I would hate to have you come and then nobody be there. I just want to put that out there for now. Thank you. Thanks. I, if I could just, I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday. Um, be safe. Enjoy the time with your family. My kids have a snow day tomorrow, even though it's remote, which is kind of nice. With all that's going on, the school district gave them a old school snow day to go out and play in the snow. So kind of looking forward to the, the family time tomorrow. I'm not so facing a window. Enjoy your families. Enjoy yourselves. Yeah. I'm glad to be back working with this group. It's a good group of people. Um, so we'll see after the first of the year. Thanks. Best of the season to everyone. Good night. Take Good night, care. Everybody. Good. Good night. Thank you.